Welcome to United Nations Academic Impact and our Digital Discussion Series podcast. Today, we will be talking to two young university students who successfully were elected to hold public office. Mary Rutigliano and Matthew Cook are students at the State University of New York College of Geneseo, a small liberal arts college in upstate New York, an hour outside Rochester. They were elected to the Board of Trustees in the village of Geneseo, a small, approximately 10,000 resident village. Many of the residents are college students from the university. As both residents of the village and students at the university, they were in a unique place to enact change and connect the two communities. 51% of the world's population is under the age of 30. That's over 3 billion people. Yet only 2% of the world's parliamentarians are under the age of 30, and 73% of countries place restrictions on young people running for office. This interview is in an effort to promote the Secretary General's Envoy on Youth's Not Too Young to Run campaign, which hopes to inspire young people to run for elected office. Thank you, Mary and Matt. Glad to have you with us. Yeah, thank you so much. It's really nice to be here and so great to be uh, with you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so happy to be here. Thanks for um, contacting us, Maria. Awesome. So we're just going to start off with the first question. What inspired you to think about running for public office? Um, for me, um, I'm a student of history. I major in history and political science uh, here at Geneseo. Um, but in my studies, I've noticed that throughout um, history, it's really been um, people that are my age, um, mine and Mary's ages, that are really pushing change forward and being the catalyst for those kind of things, doing the dirty work, um, going out, being active, um, protesting, and really being able to change the world around them. Uh, this is the best time to be able to do it. So um, I saw that there was certain things in my community that I thought that I could fix, um, and so I just went for it. Uh, and that was really the catalyst behind me wanting to run for the village board. I felt like that office would uh, afford me the best opportunity to be able to change some of the things that I thought I could. All right. And what exactly in your community did you want to fix? Well, I grew up in Geneseo, and I go to school there, so it's my college and my home. So I was in this very uh, unique position to really bring the communities together. Um, you know, we have a five-person board, and um, all of those people were senior citizens, so there are a lot of young people in our community and young families that weren't being represented. That's what Matt and I really wanted to, you know, take the first step on. We wanted to, uh, you know, set some infrastructure up that's something that's been lacking in the village as sort of um water initiatives and um yeah really just provide for the community and so for our viewers who don't know what exactly is the board of trustees in geneseo and what kind of things do they do well the board of trustees is the legislative body of um, the village of geneseo a village is uh, the smallest municipality that you can have um, in the u.s and what we do there is we, you know, enact taxes, laws. Um, we work very closely with the police department and the fire department and the public works department um, with each of the trustees uh, being a liaison and, and, you know, working very closely with the operations that the head of those departments do. Um, you know, we're kind of a sounding board for the community as well. Uh, people can come to our meetings and tell us their concerns about the community, some things they want fixed. Um, people ha can come to us with petitions. Um, we're really just there for the community. And why did you feel like getting elected to this board would be the best way to enact change? Uh, well, it's the major, it's, it's the entity that's in charge of the everyday operations of the village. So we felt that um, getting in, not only getting involved with that, but getting involved in the everyday decisions that um, we you know where to follow. It's just it's our responsibility as you know, American citizens, and it really gives us a chance to interact with our peers, the uh, college administration and the staff, and also the members of the village just in the ways that we would never be able to were we just to remain as students. It really allows us to get out in the village and uh, interact with members of the village that you wouldn't see every day, but also with students that you norm normally wouldn't socialize with, and also with the administration here. President Bowles has been uh, very helpful in moving us forward, and she's been really open to us being able to be involved with some of the things that go on around the college even. And so that's been really amazing to see as well. So that's just what we thought would give us the best opportunity to create some, to enact change around the village and around the uh, college. And what 
challenges and support did you receive when you were running for office? Well, I, you know, I said I grew up in Geneseo, so I was, you know, going door to door talking to people who've known me, in, you know, since I was in diapers. So kind of, you know, getting over that hump of you're a kid to me, you know, you're, you know, you're a young person, you don't have opinions on these things. And, you know, getting to that point where, okay, we're community members together, we are equal, we care about the same things. Um, let's have a conversation. Getting over that little ageist hump was, was pretty difficult at first. But once we got into the swing of things, um, you know, it was easier to do that. Uh, I, I ran into some of the same challenges as well, but also not being from the village initially. Um, you know, I'm from, I live uh, in Rochester, born and raised. So um, a lot of people just saw me as sort of like an outsider to the village that wasn't really intact with some of the villagers um, and some of the issues that they face every day. Um, so I had to overcome that as well, uh, along with, you know, being viewed as too young or too experienced or didn't have enough time to do it. Uh, but we also decided that we would run as independent candidates, uh, Mary and I. So to do that, to even get on the ballot, we had to receive 100 signatures from registered voters in the village. Uh, and that's just to even um, get on the ballot. Uh, so that was particularly difficult as well. But we ended up getting about 158 just by going um, around the village and just asking people to, you know, hear us out, hear what we had to say, um, and just give everyone a choice of, as to who they would like to represent them. So, um, you know, it was just those kind of challenges that we still faced every day, just trying to get our names out there and let people see us for who we were and not just some of the slights against our generation that may be out there. So your campaign... And all that being said, we did have a lot of support from people who were excited about young people, um, you know, participating in the democratic process. Absolutely. Um, and a lot of people who, you know, maybe even if they weren't going to vote for us, um, you know, signed the petition, said, you know, what the heck, having a choice on the ballot is important. So, Mary, you just mentioned that you had a lot of support from young people, voters, but also support for your campaign itself. Your campaign was primarily student-run. Um, can you or Matt talk about the roles that students played in your campaign? Sure. Um, I'll go ahead. Um, our campaign was very heavily um, ran by students, obviously, us as candidates. But we had two um, campaign managers that really helped us out, um, Sean Perry and Sam Larkin. They were really instrumental in getting us out there, getting us involved with forums and debates, and also just helping us out with some of the uh, everyday things. Um, but we also got together a team of students from all different uh, majors, backgrounds, um, extracurricular activities, and just really, that really wanted to help us out, um, get our names out there as well, and just work to get um, students on campus registered to vote and get uh events out in the village and really just help us spread our names out throughout the village. So that was really awesome to see. But we also had help from people in the village as well um, that did the same thing for us. So do you think that your age made campaigning easier or more difficult? Um, well, to turn a lot of people in the village, we had to do a lot of door-to-door -door work, um, a lot of canvassing. So definitely, you know, being a young person, having that stamina made it easier. Um, our election was in March. So sort of that January, February time is um, where the winter is pretty brutal in Geneseo. Mm -hmm. So Matt and I went out canvassing on some days, and it was right around zero degrees Fahrenheit. Um, uh -huh. So that was definitely helpful. But I think once you get over that hump of age, you can say, you know, it doesn't matter our ages or what side of the aisle we're on. Um, you know, this is local. This is municipal. We're all community members, and, you know, and no matter – what our opinions are on larger issues, we want the pipes to be fixed. We want the people in our community to be safe. And those are the issues that you can really connect with people on. So now that, you know, you've run, you've got the position, what feedback have you gotten specifically from your peers about your run for office? Has anyone ever approached you and said they've been inspired to get more involved in politics and civil society? Yeah, I actually got um, an email from someone who said that he, who goes to Geneseo um, and said that he was interested in running for the village board in his town. So, you know, he asked me for some advice, and, um, and I just said, you know, do your research and, you know, ask questions, you know, be a student. That's what um, being a legislature, 
uh, member of a legislature is all about. You know, it's, you're not going to be an expert on everything you legislate on, but, you know, doing the work and being inquisitive, um, you know, using all those tools that, you know, us young people have as students um, will really get you so far. So now that you've been in office for a while, what have you learned and accomplished, and how do your fellow board members feel about working with people who are so young? Well, well, it's definitely been such a it's been an amazing learning experience for the both of us. Uh, and as Mary said, it, that's what it's really all about. You're never going to be an expert on everything, especially uh, being uh, part of the legislature. But just being able to learn alongside people that have been doing what they've been doing for a long time, uh, it's just been invaluable to us. Um, right now, we're just working on some things down with our um, water and wastewater treatment. Um, there's been some a couple of projects that we've been working on, as well as getting our bear fountain. Um, a couple uh, back in April, the uh, bear fountain in Geneseo that's on Main Street was struck by a truck, and that was a pretty big tragedy around here. So we're working on getting that uh, up and running by next summer. Uh, it's just those kind of little things that you don't really hear about necessarily all the time, but that really affect everyone um, in whatever municipality that you're in. Uh, and that's been just really so helpful by the people on the board as well. Um, our mayor and the two other trustees that uh, were there before we were elected, they've been so helpful in just um, getting us up to speed on what's going on and really just helping us go forward. Um, they're not really, they're not treating us as kids at all. They're treating us as their coworkers and as fellow members of the board. Um, and that's just been so helpful to, you know, not being patronized, but being talked to as if you're an adult and really helping us move forward. So why do you believe that it is so important that young people run for office, especially from your perspective at the local level? Well, I just think that it's um, absolutely essential for people our age to be able to get involved. Because um, if, if you don't get involved at your young age now, it's just going to be so hard to do it um, in the future. But it also just enforces good habits, such as you know, getting uh, engaged civically, um, but also volunteering in your community, uh, getting involved in the decisions that not only affect you, but everyone else around you. It's not a lot of people realize that it's the, the local elections and the uh, municipal elections that really affect their lives the most. So when those people only vote in national elections and not the ones around them, then they feel as if they're not really having a voice. And that's a major problem, I think. So it's just really important for people our age to get involved and enact some of the change that they may want to see. Mary, you want to chime in? Yeah, of course. So what I love about local politics is that you don't have to be a poli sci major. You don't have to be a career politician. It's Local politics is this wonderful hodgepodge excuse me, of people who love their community and want to make it better. And, you know, whether you do it for one term or you do it for three, there's no, you know, you can step in, you can step out, you can come back again. It's always there and it's waiting. So, you know, for anyone who wants to make a difference in their community, who wants to, you know, be able to look at issues from, you know, a different viewpoint, this is a great opportunity. So finally, what advice would you give to young people who want to run for elected office? Well, you know, definitely be inquisitive. I know that, uh, you know, Matt and I as college students have so many, you know, research skills. We have, you know, as part of the village government, we have, we have so many experts um, at our fingertips, like the chief of police, like the um, water and wastewater operators who can, you know, if we have any questions, can tell us more about an issue, can give us that more in-depth view that we're looking for. Um, so being inquisitive, asking those questions, that's what's really important because, like we said, you're not going to be an expert on everything that you legislate on, but it is your responsibility to be able to go learn it and, you know, figure out so you can make an educated uh, decision for your community. Matt, you have anything to add? Absolutely. Um, I would just advise that you do your research and you just go for it. Um, there's always going to be times where you're going to feel a little bit discouraged and just feel like maybe you're not doing the right thing. Um, but you absolutely just have to know that that's in, in your heart that that's what you want to do and know that you can do positive um, for the people that you want to look after. So you have to just go for it. Do your research. Don't be afraid to ask for help. Uh, a lot of people see that as sort of like a weakness, but asking for help and accepting help is uh, one of the 
biggest things that I feel has gotten me where I am right now. Um, there's been times, there were times during our campaign where I really wasn't, you know, as encouraged as, uh, you know, we were going into it. So uh, there was just all those times where I just really needed help. You know, Mary really helped me out a lot. Um, just, you know, oh. just, just her, the drive that she had. And I could see, you know, she was just a freshman when we were running. Um, and it was great. It was, I was a junior, and it was just incredible to see someone that, you know, really wanted to do positive things for her home and for her college. So it, just that drive really kept me going, and that's something that you have to have, I feel like, with every, uh, no matter what you're doing. No, thanks, Matt. <laughs> of course. Thank you again, Mary and Matt. We really appreciate your time. For more information mm-hmm. on Not Too Young to Run, please visit nottooyoungtorun.org and follow our social media pages on Facebook and Twitter. Thank you for joining UNAI and for our Digital Discussion Series podcast. And if you want to learn more about UNAI, visit our website at academicimpact.un.org and join the conversation on social media at ImpactUN.